Everyone, thanks for joining me in my uh, WordCamp Riverside presentation. So, WordCamp Riverside 2018, November 3rd and 4th. So, uh, if you were able to join us there, awesome. If not, here's a voiceover of my slides and everything for the conference. So, my topic is Know Your Audience and Grow. So, first off, as always, thank you to all the WordCamp Riverside volunteers, organizers, the staff, everybody who makes things go. If this is your first WordCamp, I just want to stress, like, this is all run by volunteers who who selflessly donate their time and so super grateful for them to put on great events like this. Uh, where else can you really get all of this great content and all these speakers and everybody and meet everybody for $40, including meals? So that's quite amazing. So thank you for being here. Appreciate your time. Uh, it's a beautiful Saturday in Southern California. And you could be anywhere in the world, but you're here listening to me talk about audience segmentation. So during all my presentations, and even if you're looking at this or reading this, my Twitter handle is on the bottom of the screen here at GRTaylor2. So if you have a question, feel free to feel free to get at me and you know ask me a question. You can get reach me uh, at GRTaylor2 through all the social media platforms, through Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, all that good stuff. Twitter would probably be the best channel for this. So my, these slides are available at trinitywebmedia.com, WCRS 2018. So with that, who am I? So my name is Greg Taylor. I'm co-founder of Trinity Web Media. Trinity Web Media is a, a company that I founded with my brother three years ago. Uh, we merged my prior 10-year-old com ten year old company, Marketing Press, into Trinity Web Media. So I sort of fell into the WordPress world and into development backwards. Uh, my strength and my background is marketing. Uh, don't hold it against me. I do a marketing degree. You know, I do know marketers ruin everything. So uh, don't hold that against me. I fell backwards into this world because what was happening is I was creating – a lot of good content for a lot of clients. And we were launching on um, websites that just weren't working. They either, you know, the design is terrible or the, the UX was terrible. There's no conversion points, no call to actions. So we were pretty much hamstr we, we were pretty much tied up, you know, before we even got started with things. You know, my background is uh, I worked for a number of ad agencies, got fired from all of them because I had a will to do things differently than what fit in the revenue model of the agency. And if you're familiar with the agency world, you know that only lasts for so long. So I'm highly unemployable. So starting my own company was probably the only play for me at the time. And I did it in the, the lowest point of the economy. People thought I was crazy. And I actually thought it was the only choice for me because there's no way I was going to be hired at that time by anybody in the market where I was working, et cetera, et cetera. So this is the first time I'm doing this talk about audience segmentation and build your audience and grow. So who's this talk for? This talk is for anybody who pushes out content, anybody who's in business development, for marketing professionals, for developers, for business owners, for consultants, you know, anyone who wants to to gather an audience and learn more about the traits of a good audience, this talk is for you guys. So, you know, who are you? I imagine, you know, the, the people that I'm addressing in this audience are going to be a lot of marketers, a lot of content creators, definitely WordPress enthusiasts just by the nature of the conference, uh, a lot of developers, and the rest of that stuff. So we're going to make sure that we keep things moving and we, we talk about audience. So. It's, this is one thing that is super important to understand that I always ask that question for the simple reason that I need to know who I'm talking to. If you're a content marketer, then we're going to talk about things more content marketing specific. If you guys are all WordPress users, then we're going to talk about things about curating an audience you know, to your WordPress site specifically. So you are my audience. So... I'm starting this off with sort of practicing what I'm preaching, what I'm talking about. I got to know who you are, my direct audience. Now, once upon a time, all audiences were captive, meaning, you know, the, the content creators, you know, were the only game in town. 
the way that they were pushing out the content was the only way. And you have to think about how did people receive content back then? You know, people received content from talking to one another. Imagine that, right? Talking to each other, you know, which is pretty tribal with, you know, the storytellers and the chiefs, et cetera, et cetera. And then it moved out to, you know, wider broadcasted news, you know, newspapers. Print was a huge part of that. Uh, then from there, you know, we uh, things evolved into people communicating, you know, with the audience of, with, through mail or on the radio and telephone, television. But if you look at all those audiences, they're all captive audiences. You know, you specifically create something for one or two people, you deliver it to them, and you have them for a length of time. So let's go back. Let's go way, way back. Let's go back to 1987. This is an 80s theme conference, and yes, that is my high school graduation photo. So if I were to say audience, who do you think, what do you think I would be talking about? You know, this is 19, the mid 80s, you know, this is, you know, pre-internet days. You know, audience, I'd probably be talking about people who attended events, listenership on radio, viewership on televisions, movies, etc. I don't, you know, uh, Definitely people reading. I think that they, they were the main forms of content. And they were the main forms of content. They still are the main forms of content, if you think about it. But now they're just delivered in a different way. So a fun fact is that on the average, there are 44 minutes of content per hour on television. So 44 minutes of content per hour on television. How many times, you know... If you're of that era, would you sit through a TV show just waiting for the next one? Could you imagine having that luxury today? Could you imagine having the luxury of somebody saying, well, I'm just going to, I'm going to read your blog post because I just want to get to the, the next one that's in my feed. Or I want to read your social update because I want to get to the next one that's in your feed. No, that, that doesn't happen anymore. So 44 minutes. What would you do right now with 44 minutes? minutes of somebody's attention per hour. That's amazing. I think all of our jobs would look totally different and things in our world would be quite different. But then, and jokingly, some of you were probably born, born after the 80s, but then the internet came about. And when the internet came about, every single thing changed. Now, it didn't change overnight, but every single thing changed because Speed and access of information and content changed everything. What do I mean by that? I mean that you're able to get facts, updates, etc. super fast and you have access to all this information where before you would have to either actively search through a library, ask somebody, and rely on their expertise, or the like. So then what happened after the internet our phones got smaller. And once we went from the old school captive audience to the internet age, to the smartphone age, eventually we grew into a scrolling world where all content now and all your audience is, is gathered and is captivated, you know, through the scroll. So think about that, you know, think about, the speed going for 44 minutes to the speed of a scroll. Think about it. If you think about it, we are all, we all have attention deficit challenges. And if we don't have it in real life, you know, in human interaction, we definitely have it when it comes to consuming content. You know, you only have seven seconds to capture your audience's attention. Now, when I say your audience, these are people who already know, and believe in your product, service, and brand. Even the most rabid fan in your audience, if you don't get them within seven seconds, they're gone. Now compare that to that 44 minutes. But even more scary is you have three seconds, probably even less than three seconds, to capture the attention of somebody new. One 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000. If you didn't make a good impression in that time, they're gone. Seven, of course, is greater than three. So what are we trying to do? We're trying to grow your, 
the chances of you keeping somebody and captivating somebody by 233%. If you can turn them into your audience and you got you have seven seconds to capture their attention versus three, that's a 233% increase. So how do we fight back? How do we go ahead and create an audience and how do we cultivate an audience and curate an audience that likes what we do, they need what we have, and they... They generally like you. You know, it's back to the old old rules of business. People want to do business with people they know, like, and trust, but can also solve their problem. So let's never forget about the problem-solving part of this equation. So step one, fighting back and, and curating your own audience. It's really important to know your current business. You have to know your current business. You have to understand who your ideal client and what drives your business. You know, Trinity Web Media has worked tirelessly in the last year with creating personas for our business. And I can go in, I'm going to go into those a little bit more later in this presentation. But know your own business. Know what they look like. Know their roles. Know what drives them. Know what is going to go ahead and make them make the decisions. Step three. Know their behaviors. Step four, ignore traditional demographics. Now, it's going to be super important to ignore traditional demographics and focus on behavior. So the reason that I say that is somebody's behavior when it comes to content consumption or even in general in life, you know, typically never changes. But somebody 18 to 24 making X amount of dollars is only going to stay that way for a short time. So unless you're okay with constantly developing and creating new audiences, which I would highly suggest against, you know, it's easier to go ahead and target and speak to people about what drives them, their decision-making process, what problems they have, and their behaviors versus the traditional, you know, 18 to 24-year-old making $50,000 that lives in Chandler, Arizona, or et cetera. Because that's what's going to, that's the part of the equation that's going to constantly be changing. And let's control this as much as possible. So I just, I mentioned Trinity Web Media Persona. So when we go ahead and we create content, we create audience segmentation, we have three different personas. You know, we have pretty, well, actually four. We have a uh, persona one, persona two, persona three, and then a persona kind of two and a half. I guess maybe a, five, a fifth, not to confuse things, a one and a half. And I can go into that a little bit here. So our number one persona is small business owners. Think about what drives a small business to make a decision. Think about the problems that a small business owners face. Think about how your product, service, brand can go ahead and help that small business owner. And when I say you, you know, I'm speaking about ourselves. You know, your persona one may look very different. Our persona two is mid-level C manager. It's that vice president of marketing who, although he makes a lot of the decisions, he still has to look good to somebody else, to his board of directors, or if it's a, you know, vice president of business, of business development, or even a CMO, chief marketing officer, they still have people to answer to, you know. So our job when we speak to the mid-level C management team is we need to understand that they need have a need for results and they need to look good to their bosses and to their board. The third one is the dreamers and the disruptors. Uh, imagine a lot of you guys out there would be number three. Uh, dreamers and disruptors fit very nicely into the start startup world, uh, into somebody who has a will to do things differently. You know, I went from persona three myself personally to be a dreamer and disruptor because I wanted to figure out how to go ahead and launch a company and do things differently. So I stopped getting fired from agencies all the time to sort of one, the small business owner. And now I'm even in number two where I have a partner and a team where I need to be accountable to. So those are our three main personas. Now, sometimes there's a two and a half. A two and a half is, is a, sort of a visionary mid-level C manager, somebody who wants to take risks, somebody who's okay disrupting the industry and disrupting the status quo. Uh, the 1.5 is a small business owner where they have 
other people to answer to, much like myself, I describe, to describe myself. So what we try to do is we try to tailor a piece of content out to each one of these people and have them in mind when we're creating content. This is our audience that we understand. These three segments are our audience. And we figure that out by asking and by doing a lot, by asking them what drives them. We also figured it out by going into details into our own legacy and our own history of the company and say, who do we work well with? What projects were successes? Which ones weren't? And how do we take things from there? So here's the tips to address your audience. And I think that this is where the rubber meets the road, where what we're doing is we're taking the science of audience segmentation, the creativity of creating content, and sort of going into it into, a, into like tactical mode and making sure that what you're doing addresses your audience. So make sure that you understand what content your audience wants. You know, there's nothing easy. You know, you have seven seconds. You you had three seconds. Now let's say we move them down the continuum to your seven sec to seven seconds. Now we have that gap. We have that 233% increase that I talked about where we're going and we're going to try to understand what content helps your client. We want to make sure that our content's always helpful. You know, we use teaching and infotainment as a huge strategy for our own company. We give away as much information as we possibly can about exactly what we do. We are try, we try to be super helpful in solving their problems. Remember, everything stems back to solving problems. Trying to, we're going to, yeah, address their needs. What do they need? What do they need to know? You know, sometimes, some people want to know things. Some people need to know things. And we try to walk that line a little bit. Because if you address their needs, and maybe the need is to, uh, a tutorial on how to set up Google Analytics. Now, that's something that you could probably do for them and provide as, at a service. But do you think that that's really what you want to be doing? Or would you rather be working on marketing strategy and web development versus just installing a small piece of a code snippet for somebody? If you address their needs, they're going to remember where they got that information from, and you're going to be positioned as a subject matter expert for them to rely on and a valued partner. Help them solve their problems. Every piece of content should have some sort of problem-solving angle. You know, problem-solving is the new selling, and I spoke at WordCamp New York, and San Diego about how problem solving really helps you grow your business and it's, it's helped us tremendously. So remember that your content tips have to help your clients solve problems. And one of the bigger things, one of the ways that we do that is we tap into your customers frequently asked questions. I hate frequent FAQ pages because I always feel like if there's an FAQ page on your site that doesn't point out, that's not used as like a a repo or like an index for bigger content, there's a, a gap in your content. So I feel like if you have to answer questions on one page, like FAQ style, you know, you have a, a content, a gap in your content that needs to be addressed. So pay attention to that. Look, look at what questions your clients ask you. And if somebody asks you that question, you know, in person, then you can be sure that somebody's searching for it. So it's kind of how I structure my content is, I speak at a lot of work camps. I speak at a lot of conferences. And if somebody has the guts to stand up in a conference and raise their hand and ask a question, then I can imagine that there's lots of people also searching for that answer anonymously online. So I try to structure content around that. I structure content around questions that I hear other people ask. Structure content around questions that I ask myself. Questions that our team asks. So if you can tap into the questions that you're constantly being asked, that's a great source of content. You have to understand where your audience listens to you best. You know, when you you create the content and content and audience, you know, they're they're very they're synonymous, you know, for a, with with a lot of things. So understand where your con, your audience lives, where they listen to you. You know, so half of your audience may be on LinkedIn. Half of your audience may like Instagram, half your audience may get information from you from email subscriptions. No matter what it is, I think it's really important that you understand the psychology of your broadcast platforms. Because each platform, whether it be, be your website, whether it's social media, 
whether it's email marketing, they all have a different psycho psychology as they're consuming that content. And it's important for you to understand that and tailor your message and tailor your delivery to those platforms. So if we go back and we go way back to the year of 2017 here in Riverside when I spoke, I always say that the website is the sun of the solar system. So all of your marketing efforts, everything should be directed around your website. So when you're going for conversion, and this is a little bit off our topic of audience, when you're going for conversion, you want them to convert. The ultimate conversion point is on your site, whether that's a click, whether that's a filling out a form, whether that's a newsletter subscription, et cetera, et cetera, whether it's buying something. Those are all key conversion points. That should all happen on your website. So remember, the website is the sum of sources. Everything needs to go back there. So since we did this, the results are in, and we launched this, you know, it's, it, we've gone through a couple of different um, pivots of what we had to make sure that everything works, but here are some, here's some growth that we experienced as a company. So here's our unique page views from per month, and dating back to... November, one year. So November 1, 2017 to October 31st, 2018. We went from 534 a month to 2976 a month. That's because what we're doing is we're speaking to the right people about the right things. If you look at our search results, we redefined the, the targeted audience in February of 2018. We started this in... This, is, this, this graphic goes from September 2017, redefined the audience in February of, of 2018, and now look where we are. Our search, just showing up in search and showing up in the top pages of search, you know, is huge. Uh, we're plus 100, uh, I'm sorry, we're plus 886 quality search results. So that's a huge increase. What did that lead to? That led to a revenue increase of 68%. So by audience, by, by understanding our audience, giving them the right message at the right time, and making sure that they receive it in the right place, has helped our revenue grow by booking projects and consulting, et cetera, et cetera, our other revenue streams by 68%. So I think that that speaks for itself. And who wouldn't want you know 68, 70% growth year after year? So here is the key audience takeaways that I want to leave you with as I'm wrapping up here. So always seek to understand. You know, we have a problem-solving methodology in Trinity Web Media that works really well where we address the problem, we empathize with it, we set, set expectations of how we can help and when it will be solved by, and then we go ahead and we make sure that we deliver on that. So we try to seek to understand the situation that we're in, and we're seek in, in this context, we're seeking to understand our audience and who they are and what drives them. We really care about the details. So if we notice, you know, our audience is slanted towards one behavior, buying behavior, buying persona, we make sure that we take care of the details to speak to them and to ad address them directly to make sure that everything is as dialed in and everything, there are no loose ends when it comes to this. Never, ever, ever underestimate your audience's intelligence. If you don't care, they're not going to care. If you mail it in and just kind of like say this is good enough or, you know, you've always heard the term good enough for government work or good enough, et cetera, et cetera, your, your audience, are gonna, they're going to know that. Never un underestimate your audience's intelligence, and especially their, their EQ, their, their emotional quotient, versus their IQ. I mean, always understand that there's a person on the other end of your message. You know, I don't believe in B2B marketing or B2C marketing. I believe in people-to-people -people marketing, as it's been well-documented in a lot of our videos and podcasts, etc. So if you never underestimate your audience's intelligence, you're always pushing yourself to produce the best thing and to stay in the forefront for your audience. And just be kind. You know, being kind and never underestimating your audience's intelligence go hand in hand. Sometimes you're going to be asked a lot of dumb questions. I guarantee it. But answer that with being, 
as understanding and as patient as possible with as much kindness as possible, that goes a long way. You know, you never know what somebody else is going through. You never know, you know, how, how, how they're facing things or how they're dealing with things, growth, you know, um, losing, loss, et cetera, et cetera. So just be kind. Never underestimate what they're going through and always try to seek to understand. So here are my last three points, and then typically I open it up for questions and answers. I always end all my WordCamp presentations with these three last points. So the first one is always go do. If some of this knowledge resonated with you and some of this information you know, resonated and sparked some sort of interest with you, go do, go do it. My, my advice would be, first thing to do is look at your business and understand what drives your clients to make their decisions. Understand where they're coming from what they do, and some of their behaviors. Understand that perfection is the enemy of progress. Understand that if you go and do something, it is probably not going to be perfect out of the gate. But it always can review, refine, and repeat. Review what you did, make it better, do it again. Do more of what works, do less of what doesn't work, but understand that you're not going to hit perfection. You know, everybody listening, everybody you know in the room in, in Riverside today, if you were to wait to launch a website until it was perfect, it would never get done. You know, so we work heavily on this review, refine, repeat process and understanding perfection is the enemy of progress. My last point is always help somebody else. You know, I don't proclaim to have all the answers. I think that I'm just further down the continuum than some people out there and I'm also behind a whole lot of others. But I have something to give, and I have something to give back to this great WordPress community of ours and, you know, to the Business Society in San Diego and here in the Inland Empire, Orange County, you know, to go ahead and help somebody. So if you can help somebody else, always help somebody else. I mean, it, hurt, it doesn't hurt to help somebody else and, and help, you know, let them step their game up. So... Again, thank you so much for checking this out. These slides are available here at trinitywebmedia.com slash WCRS20018. That's trinitywebmedia.com slash WCRS2018. And thank you so much for being part of my audience. Thank you so much for being an active part of WordCamp. And thanks for listening. So any questions, again, you can always reach me at grtaylor2 across the social media platforms, and I'd happy to have a conversation and talk to you. So until next time, talk to you later.